Our next case is United States versus General Motors Corp Corporation. And if you look in your materials, you will see that the, this case is uh, in, included in the outline because it focuses upon the issue of personal property. Now, as you uh, can imagine, personal property is consists of those things that a, a person owns. And we distinguish in the law between personal property, which are tangible items, things such as, you know, pens or clothing or automobiles or whatever, and real property, which is, of course, uh, land. And uh, pr this case concerns a certain kind of, of personal property and involves uh, the issue of rights. And the, one of the important things about the area of property law is that uh, rights are, are uh, attached to property uh, as well as, as, as just the, the physical thing. So we have a discussion here by the Supreme Court in this case concerning um, property rights. Uh, and, and, and this case is from 1944. This is uh, a case that stems from World War II and involves uh, the Second War Powers Act of March 27, 1942. Now, essentially what happened was uh, there was a, a taking by eminent domain of uh, certain areas of a, of a warehouse. Um, the uh, the uh, military occupied certain floors of this particular warehouse, and then there were some, some private owners, some private uh, enterprises that used other areas of, of, the, of the warehouse. And during the course of the war, the, the uh, War Powers Act enabled the military to uh, use em eminent domain to acquire uh, and use uh, certain property that it needed for, you know, to fight the war. So in this particular case, uh, the procedure was followed properly, and uh, what happened was the, uh, the military came in and, be and, and, and took over this particular property. The court says in its decision that pursuant to the request, the United States, June 8, 1942, filed a petition in the district court for an order condemning such temporary use and granting the government the right of immediate possession, use, and improvement for military purposes. On the same day, the court entered an order declaring the property condemned for a term ending June 30, 1943, and granting the United States the right of immediate possession. The order was served on the respondent, and shortly thereafter, it began removing its personal property from the area and dismantling and demolishing bins and fixtures so that the space was available for government use by June 19th. So what we have here is, is, is the, the, the requirement, um, the, the urgency of the war required the government to, to obtain this particular property, went through the legal procedures to do that. So now we're to, the, the, the issue of, of this uh, case is uh, very well set forth in uh, the, the, the paragraph talking about what the costs were to the respondent. And the respondent offered to prove various items of cost caused by the removal of the, of the contents. These consisted in the area of salaries of employees engaged in the work, compensation due employees put out of work by the removal, wages of janitors and watchmen for the protection of the building during the moving, the cost of shipping the contents of the building, and, and various, you know, you can see that there, are, there is a long laundry list of items that the respondent said, you know, was part of their costs, and they want to be compensated, uh, constitutionally compensated for their, for their costs. The jury awarded compensation in a lump sum at a rate of approximately 40 cents per square foot for the term of one year, and uh, they uh, have been looking for, for more than that. They've been looking for like f up to 43 cents per square foot. Uh, the Court of Appeals uh, held that items of actual loss, which were the direct and necessary result of the respondent's uh, exclusion from the lease area, might be proved not as independent items, but as elements to be considered in arriving at the sum, which would be just compensation for the interest in which the government condemned. So we, we come down to the, to the nub of it all, which is basically the, uh, the Fifth Amendment, and, it, and the Court goes on to say that the correctness of the decision of the court below depends on the scope and meaning of the constitutional provision, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation, which conditions the otherwise unrestrained power of the sovereign, that's the sovereign is you know, the, the United States government, to expropriate without compensation whatever it needs. The critical terms are property taken and just compensation. It is conceivable that the first was used in this vulgar and un untechnical sense of the physical thing with respect to which the citizen exercises rights recognized that by law. 
Um, the court goes on to identify the fact that uh, the, the use of the property was not just the, the use of the property and the use of, of, of the, of the uh, things that the company owned, but the rights that were associated with it. The, the, the court says that when the sovereign exercises the power of eminent domain, it substitutes itself in relation to the physical thing in question in place of him who formerly bore the relation to that thing. Which we, dem which we denominate ownership. In other words, it deals with what lawyers term the inter individual's interest in the thing. The individual's interest in the thing. That interest may comprise the group of rights for which the shorthand term is a fee simple. Or it may be in the interest known as an estate or tenancy for years, in, as in the present, tense, in present instance. The constitutional provision is addressed to every sort of interest the citizen may possess. And the court goes on to talk about the fact that the government must compensate properly, not just for the, the physical property, but for the interests that are accumulated that are associated with that property. And that was their conclusion. It's a, it's, it's a relatively long case. It's uh, definitely worth uh, your time to, to read and explore. And you will find that uh, it sets forth some very good arguments, uh, pro and con, concerning um, how much the government should compensate a, uh, an entity when it takes its property. And, uh, of course, the, the important distinction between um, the property itself and the interests or rights involved with that property.